Hi there, I am Liz Vales, Area Director, and I am going to continue talking to you about some aspects of programming um, as far as some additional resources and some examples of types of programs that you could do in what I call Programming 102. So what I'm going to be talking to you about um, is programming towards our core values. So what our core values are um, and some examples of different types of programs you can do in helping to um, really encourage these core values on your floors. Next, I'll be talking to you about the resources that we provide on our staff links page as far as reporting that you'll be doing um, and then just helpful programming resources in there. And then lastly, I'll be talking to you about our six weeks challenge, which um, is kind of a programming community building challenge that occurs in the first six weeks of the fall semester. So starting with our core values, um, you probably already have um, uh, learned about these at some point in, in some of your training so far. Um, and so these are fun, warmth, learning, sustainability, and diversity and um, they're, they're very important to us as a department um, and additionally in um, you guys as staff members and being kind of that front line with our residents um, and helping to encourage these, these values within your floors. So the first two uh, core values of fun and warmth, I'm gonna uh, touch on those first. So when is a good time to provide programming towards these core values. Uh, definitely within the first six weeks, you're gonna really be focusing on um, building that community and getting to know each other within that time. And so using uh, fun and warmth during that and really welcoming them in and making your floor feel like home and a fun place to be. And then another good time is during the stressful times that you might identify around midterms or finals, um, or if there's something occurring on your floor that, that is stressful. And a good way to do fun and work programming is through active programming. And what I mean by that is either uh, doing something actively together, whether it's a program you put on or taking your students to an event together, but it's something that you're doing active as opposed to putting flyers around or a bulletin board up. So what are some examples of programs that you could do around these core values? Definitely focusing on the social aspect of uh, bringing people together. Food is always a good thing to include. Um, and also attending events together. So uh, taking a couple of your residents to a basketball game or a school play or an event that's uh, going on somewhere else outside of the halls. Decorating your floor together. Uh, this is a big one. I especially see it a lot in the first year halls. Um, maybe identifying a floor theme at the beginning of the year that you kind of um, use that your residents might help you know decorate the walls or the bathrooms or um, during the holidays just kind of bringing that sense of uh, community and also this this is our home and then kind of what I touched on too just that community building aspect of identifying a theme or maybe having a floor t-shirt or a floor Facebook page and any ways that you guys can identify yourself as your own community and um, get to know each other a little bit more. So moving on to learning. When is a good time um, to program towards our core value of learning? So beginning to mid-semester, um, obviously it's good to start this um, you know, when they're fresh in those first six weeks, but this is also something I think you can focus on you know, more in the, the middle of the semester when things start getting heavy academically and, and they might really need uh, some of those resources for um, you know, how they can learn best in, in the classroom and in their classes. So um, you know, another good time for doing that is when stress is lower. If they're already stressed about what they're learning in the classroom, um, you know, maybe focusing some of your educational programming during those, those more down times during the semester. So, so there's kind of two aspects to the core value of learning. That one is educational programming that you could put on um, where they're learning outside of what they're learning in their classes, or programming towards um, giving them those skills or skill sets that they might be struggling with um, while learning in their classes. So, utilizing the career center, um, whether that's getting pamphlets and handouts about study skills or 
um, resume building that you could post around your hall or you know under the slip under their doors kind of passive programming or active programming bringing a staff member in to talk to them during a program or a floor meeting or taking your residents to the career center to learn about their resources or taking them to an academic skill series session which happens um, every week and kind of touches on some of those important study skills as well sustainability so a good time to focus on this as far as just kind of primary information would be beginning a semester. Uh, a lot of students are going to come in with a base knowledge of, you know, recycling's good, this is how I recycle, uh, but there's a lot more to sustainability than that, and so kind of providing that information maybe passively on a bulletin board or something at the beginning of the year and setting, you know, your expectations for your floor about how you, um, and your residents are going to be sustainable. And then really anytime throughout the semester, you could do maybe more of a focus on one specific aspect of sustainability, such as water conservation, um, or even do an active program around one of those topics. So what are some examples of sustainability program you could do? Um, as I said, focusing on a specific issue such as water or electric conservation, um, doing recycle reminders, um, or compost reminders, you know, we have a lot of avenues all over campus for uh, recycling and composting. So um, really encouraging those within your own floors. Uh, doing your own footprint, uh, there's a lot of great uh, online assessments and kind of surveys that people can take individually to see what their individual impact on our earth is, and that's kind of a uh, creating awareness, you know, I know that I can recycle and make a difference, but what am I really, what impact am I really making on this earth with my everyday decisions? So that's a kind of a fun way to, to create that awareness. Using recycled products for uh, activities, so whether that's you as an RA or making your door ducts with recycled products or you're putting on a floor program where your residents are making some kind of craft or around the holidays, making you know an ornament out of recycled products so that kind of thing and then finally ORL has uh, certain students that are sustainability educators and so their job is to focus primarily on the issues around sustainability or the topics around sustainability and so they're the ones that are going to be extremely knowledgeable about this area um, and are going to be really great resources for either um, you know to, to bounce stuff off them get program ideas or to have them come in and talk to your to your residents. So the last core value of diversity, when is it good to program around diversity? And the answer is always. Um, it's always a good um, topic to, to start the year off. Again, kind of setting those expectations for your floor, creating that awareness um, about what Wesleyan offers around these topics, and then just continuing that throughout the year in both passive and active programming. And so there's just a variety of different ways that you can go with this. Um, and in the resources that I'm going to show you here in the next few minutes, um, you'll be able to see some more specific um, program ideas around the issues, but lots of different um, areas within diversity, whether you're focusing on the cultural kind of international aspect of diversity or diving into um, LGBTQ+, gender, religion, race, privilege, um, supporting some of the awareness months throughout the year, um, doing, you could do an active or passive around that. And then finally, just as I talked about with the sustainability educators, we also have multicultural educators that do the same um, with a focus on different areas within multiculturalism and diversity. And they're fantastic resources to also use for programming ideas or um, take twos and that kind of thing. All right, so I'm going to switch gears to staff links. So this is kind of uh, the, um, an important resource for you as an RA and there's various things. Staff links is what we call uh, a page in our, on our website um, that only you as staff have um, access to. And so some of the things within staff links that uh, are going to be useful are links to information reports, weekly reports, pro devo logs, and duty logs. So your information reports or IRs are going to be anytime something needs to be documented, um, whether it's about an incident or something that happened in the hall. So links and uh, or the link to that and instructions on how to do that is in this web page. 
Um, your weekly reports are going to be due every week, so the link for that for your specific calls in there, as well as your Pro Devo logs. So throughout each semester, you're required to attend for professional development opportunities or programs for your own professional development, and then you're going to kind of reflect on them um, in this log after each one. And then your duty logs are due uh, after every duty shift that you have. Again, it's kind of an overview about uh, your duty shift, your, your rounds, how the building looked, were there any incidents, that kind of thing. And then uh, finally, the resources, and this is what I'm going to focus on, the, the various websites that we provide or specific program ideas um, are tied into this link as well. Okay, so staff links, our RDs are pretty good uh, during fall training about um, emailing you this link because it's not something that you can just type in the search bar and access. So this is the website and this is what it's going to look like when you first go to it. And so these are some of the general links that I told you about as far as the information reporting and the instructions here, some of the programming information. And then if you were to scroll down further on this page, that's where you would see the weekly report links, the um, duty report links, etc. But I'm going to focus right here on programming. So if I were to click on this programming ideas and information, this is what's going to pop up. So your staff programming pages. You can see right here we have general community development, um, which includes different energizers or team builders activities, examples of those. And then specifically, you could go um, into inclusion sustainability if you're looking to program towards some of those core values that we talked about. So if I were to go into community development, it's going to take me into here um, and list out some of those specifics that I mentioned. And since they're green, you can see you'll be able to click on them further for more um, actual examples of programs, detailed programs that you could put on. And then also, if you were to continue to scroll down here, it just gives you some kind of pointers when you're thinking about community development. Um, you know, what is community development? Why is it important? Why do we want you to be doing it um, as an RA? And then when you are looking to maybe to do a community develop or a community builder um, or some kind of development within your floor and you're going to put on a program or um, you know do a, a bulletin board or something what are some things to consider so who are the people on your floor um, what are you trying to convey and it gives you just um, kind of some pointers in that way so but next if I were to click on one of these it's going to take me uh, to kind of this grid and you'll, you can see they're green again, you'll be able to click on them. And these are actual examples of um, an activity from start to finish on how to put it on and the questions to ask and, and what um, area or educational piece it focuses on um, within um, community building and that kind of thing. So moving on from those resources, I'm going to finish off this presentation uh, talking about community building and why it's important to us, when it's important to us, and um, finish out with talking about the challenge that we provide um, you guys during those first uh, critical six weeks. So when you're talking about community building um, and you want to break it down, what is community? Um, you as a floor share a common purpose of being students here at Illinois Wesleyan. Um, you live in close proximity to each other. You interact very regularly. Um, and you want <clears throat> to create that respectful and considerate environment um, on your floor and kind of define what your expectations are for your specific community. Uh, community development and taking it a bit further and what we hope that you're doing during your community building efforts is shaping your environment on your floor and building the experiences and meeting um, what the specific needs and interests are of your members um, and then just <clears throat> providing those skills and creating, you know, a positive attitude and environment um, around, uh, around your floor. And so what we, what we want you to achieve is some kind of sense of community on your floor. So uh, a commitment to each other and to the floor, a cooperation among each other, a willingness to talk about things and be open and respectful in your environment and to take responsibility for, for yourself and your actions within that community. So the first six weeks are extremely important, especially in residence life, um, as kind of being that intense adjustment period, especially for first years who are coming from um, living with their parents in high school to now being completely independent. 
um, and just a big transitional period for building those habits and having to live in close quarters with someone and um, kind of developing their um, schedules and norms for their, their success within the next four years. So that's why we focus on those four, first six weeks when people um, either first arrive or are arriving back to campus. Um, and the six-week challenge that I mentioned is kind of guidelines for you as an RA during those first six weeks. So um, helping to kind of um, shape uh, or guide you along in your community building efforts and kind of provide a challenge as well as a helpful checklist um, to stay on course during that really important time. Um, and it's also a fun, rewarding method of tracking, you know, how your floor is doing and how each of your individual residents are doing. And um, we also try to provide something as a whole from the department last year when we did this uh, at the, the three week mark, so that kind of ha you're halfway there. Um, we did a ice cream social with Dean Carla, and so that was an opportunity for her to recognize you and the importance of what you do and the impact you have. And then at the end of the six week challenge for those that can completed it successfully and really poured themselves into it, we had pizza with the president. So again, it was an opportunity to interact with just you know you as an RA team and the president um, kind of acknowledging the specific work you do as an RA. So just another added kind of bonus and um, motivational aspect towards this. So I wanted to um, end this by giving you an example of what the six week challenge looks like. And I don't want you to be intimidated by a lot of wording and um, things that you need to check off because it'll make a lot more sense once you get into training and the RDs uh, review this with you. But this would be an example of the first week for a first year RA. So this is actually before school starts. This is during turning Titan, the orientation week, um, and going over into the move-in weekend. So a lot of this is going to focus on the orientation piece and what's offered during that time, which is why um, why it is different than the upper division um, RA first, first week challenge. So doing those floor meetings um, during that first week, during orientation week, attending some of the orientation programs, um, a fun program to take residents to, and then just some pointers, you know, being visible, highly visible and available during this time, leaving your door open, introducing yourself, learning names, learning room numbers, um, collecting roommate agreements, which you'll learn about more, doing more informal get-togethers and giving us examples of what you did, introducing residents to each other, you know, keeping an eye out on your specific residents, such as international students or students that, you know, came by themselves and have anyone else from their high school here, uh, special needs, and then just any other kind of notes or observations that you take during that first week of getting to know each other. And here is what the upper division RA week one looks like. It's actually very similar in a lot of um, rollover. It just doesn't have some of that uh, week of orientation within it. So, you know, still still doing community building efforts, um, taking them to events, being um, visible, introducing yourself, learning room numbers, um, and then kind of keeping an eye out on um, students with special needs and um, do you have any transfer students? Finally, I'm going to uh, just review with you real quick what uh, a different week looks like. So this is looks like week three. Um, you can see this is Labor Day week, and during this year it was the second week of classes. And so what are kind of some of the differences on this um, week challenge than the first one that I showed you? So continuing to tell us about what are those community builders, you know, whether they're informal or not, what you've been doing with your floor and your residents, asking them about what they've done. Labor Day weekend just happened, what they do, how was it? Um, having more of those deeper level significant conversations other than just a hi, you know, what's your name? Um, you know, really getting to know um, each of them and greeting them by their first names, identifying residents that really haven't seemed to adjust well, um, doing meals um, and interactions and um, kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people that um, you feel like are struggling a little bit, identifying those leaders, um, linking subgroups together. So, you know, I know this person's interested in this and this person's interested in the same. Maybe they could be good friends. Um, 
And then we all we always like to put in reminders about your specific programming requirements too. So for this one, you can see be thinking about and planning your September program, um, and then sharing your ideas with your RD. So um, those are just some examples of what a um, weekly challenge will look like for those first six weeks. All right, so that comes to the end of the presentation. Um, the activity that we're going to have you do for this um, is kind of being able to uh, put yourself in the shoes of an RA and respond to um, some hypothetical issues that might be occurring on your floor. So you're going to think of it in the way that you are an RA, you're a couple months into the semester, um, and you're starting to observe some microaggressions that are occurring on your floor throughout your community. So um, an example of microaggressions could be that your residents are speaking negatively about each other. They're talking behind each other's backs. There's kind of just like a um, ten, tense um, feel on your floor. So um, we'd like you to utilize the Staff Links website that I showed you um, within this presentation and come up with a program or tool that you would use to address these concerns. Um, and then talk about you know why you chose what you did and how you feel that it's going to help improve the issues that we just talked about. So that is all. Good luck.